Thanks, Rob, from all mine. And uh, attendees, all mine. Great. Thank you, Audrey. Uh, one other thing that I want to ask you to pray for. You probably won't know, but when I served up in Wildwood, um, I was also asked to, if I would be kind of like an assistant chaplain to the chaplain at the Bowser Legion. And I felt that was a good opportunity to be able to serve the Lord there and have an opportunity to share with, with the people at the Legion. And as chaplains, we have the opportunity, the freedom, to pray, to lead the people in readings from the scripture, uh, during, for example, during Remembrance Day services, those kinds of things. Everything is changing in our country. And I remember, I remember saying to somebody, you know, I'm, I'm really amazed that we still have this privilege. You know, that the government has said nothing. Well, up until a week ago, a week and a half ago, they, the head chaplain and the Minister of Defense issued a statement saying that they were now um, encouraging, that was their, their words, but they were going, going to tell chaplains that they are no longer to use the word God in ceremonies like Remembrance Day. Uh, as a matter of fact, I tuned into the service at than I know yesterday. I don't know if any of you did, but the chaplain that was uh, part of that service, the very first thing she said was she said to the people now, this morning you can pray to your higher power. That was, the, that was it. And there was no further mention of God or anything to do with, you know, we read from the scriptures, we could do anything like that. Now that privilege is being taken away. And uh, so pray for the chaplains, especially the evangelical chaplains, those that believe and love the Lord Jesus. My chaplain who was at, at the Bowser Legion was an Anglican background, retired pastor, but he loved the Lord. And after being a chaplain there for some 30 years, the new president let him go last year, along with me, of course, because I was and uh, so, it, you know, everything in our world is changing, even here in our own country. Um, you know, pray, pray for these chaplains. You know, the Lord, they have to find other ways to reach for these people, to these uh, the, uh, military and so on. And so pray for them. Well, pray for our country. All right, let's continue to worship the Lord. Praise Him with our voices. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
exalted on high, crowned with many crowns we've been saying, we've been singing, and yet he's small enough to live within our hearts. He is, according to the scripture, he's a gentle shepherd. We're going to be talking about gentleness today, kindness. And our Lord is a supreme example of those things. Gentle shepherd, we need him today. Come and lead us. understand the truths of your scripture. And so we ask this this morning. Ask your blessing on your word. Speak to our hearts with it. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Galatians chapter 5. It's interesting what the, the, the different translations of the scripture do with some of these words. By the way, let me, I want to say this first of all, mention this to you. It's the fruit of the Spirit, not fruits. The fruit of the Spirit. Okay? For the benefit of this study, I've been taking these apart. Talking about love and peace and Joy. But you can't really do that. This is the fruit of the Spirit. 
They all are together. For those that live in the Holy Spirit, all of these are these, this fruit is to be on exhibit. Now, as I said, it's interesting what the different translations do with these words, where the New King James Version says kindness, the older one says gentleness. Where the New King, uh, King, New King James Version says gentleness, the older person says meekness. And I believe we can put goodness in here as well, humility, kindness, all of those things. So we're going to kind of look at those all together this morning. Both translations are valid. So gentleness and meekness together because I believe that the one is an outward expression of the other. If you're a meek person, which the dictionary, by the way, says is characterized by patient endurance, which we looked at last week, or the, and both the Greek and the Hebrew words suggest humility, humbleness. Then you must also, I believe, be a gentle person. That is kind, amiable, not harsh or stern, or violent. Now that isn't to say that we don't ever struggle with those things. But our habit, the habit of those who know the Lord, is gentleness, meekness, and humility. Or it should be. One brother wrote this, he said, I believe the first test of a truly great man or woman is their humility. I don't mean humility as in doubt of his, own, his or her own power or hesitation in speaking his or her own opinion, but really great men and women have a feeling that the greatness is not in them, but through them, that they could not do or be anything else than God made them. Andrew Murray, the man of prayer, said this, the humble man feels no jealousy or envy. He can praise God when others are preferred and blessed before him. He can bear to hear others praised while he is forgotten because he or she has received the spirit of Jesus who pleased not himself and who sought not his own honor. And therefore in putting on the Lord Jesus Christ, he or she has put on a heart of compassion kindness, meekness, long-suffering, and humility. M. R. D. Hahn, do you remember him? M. R. D. Hahn used to say, humility is something we should constantly pray for, yet never thank God we have. You know, in our society today, there is one thing that's not emphasized, especially where the men are concerned. Now, I'm going to be talking a lot to the men, but ladies, these principles also apply to you. Okay? And the thing that is not emphasized in men today so much is the softer side. The softer side. To suggest that a man should be humble and gen gentle usually generates laughter. In pro sports today, the accent is on bigger, meaner, tougher, all that. So by today's standards, if, for us as guys, if you're not a jock, then you're probably a geek. It's a dog, you know. What kind of man, for example, do those violent, destructive war and crime video games that are sold and hyped in the media look for? I don't know if you've seen the latest uh, ads for a video game called Mortal Kombat. What you see on the TV is a, is a guy, big, muscly, you know, guy, standing on the roof of a vehicle surrounded by a mob 
And he's going, Mortal Kombat! That's the kind of man society's looking for. That's what they find important. But that attitude, of course, is not confined to men either. Many ladies are into bodybuilding, boxing, all those heavy, all those sports that would show off the, you know, the muscle and the macho, all that stuff. Today, oftentimes, humility and gentleness is seen as a sign of weakness. But the scriptures make it clear, however, that part of God's plan for real men and women of God is to be gentle and meek, humble. For me, I think uh, a good example of that, he's gone home now to glory, but it was our brother Billy Graham. Here's a man who had opportunity to, opportunity to influence many presidents of the United States, Hollywood celebrities, millions of people throughout the world, and yet through the power of the Holy Spirit, chose to be a humble servant of God. I'm amazed that if you look in the scriptures at how God used those who were humble and meek to do his most important work. He chose a gentle and a humble shepherd in David to be the king of Israel. He chose a humble maiden to bear his only son. And he himself came in the flesh as a meek and gentle Jewish carpenter. So turn with me, if you will, for a moment to Numbers, Numbers chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12. chapter 12. Miriam and Aaron, Moses' brother and sister, were not very happy with Moses and speaking out against him because he married an Ethiopian woman, it says here. And they said, Has the Lord indeed, verse 2, spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Verse 3, now listen to this. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Wow. I suspect that like me, many of you never thought of Moses as being meek and gentle. But these verses say that he was more so than anyone on the earth. If you remember the story of Moses, after he lost his temper, and see what I said, you, can, you, know, you have a habit of being humble and gentle, but we're human. Sometimes we mess up. And Moses lost his temper and killed an Egyptian, and God then sent him out to the desert for 40 years to lead the sheep, to be a shepherd for his father-in-law. And he sent him out there to teach him to be a humble and gentle person. And Moses learned his lesson so well that when God called him to lead his people out of Egypt, God had to show Moses that it was through his humility and gentleness that God would do mighty things. Moses was, was always humble and gentle before the people. 
When Moses killed the Egyptian, he thought he could lead the people by force. But God showed him it would be through humility and gentleness. As I was reading an old copy of the Daily Bread, I came across a meditation that talked about Moses' rod and his shepherd's staff. It pointed out that it wasn't just a tool that God used to show his mighty power, but it was a reminder to Moses that he was just a humble shepherd. As you read through the book of Numbers, I was struck by the number of times that Moses reacted to the grumbling of the people in humility and grace, when he had every right to lash out and respond with violence and anger. You remember when the spies in chapter 14, when the spies came back from spying out the land, Moses wasn't going to be able to go into the promised land. But when they came back and and most of the spies said, oh, well, yeah, it's a great land, but hey, there's giants, okay? There's giants in the land. We can't possibly win. And Caleb and Joshua said, no, that's wrong. We have God on our side. We need to just follow him. Go ahead, follow him. And it tells us in chapter 14, Moses' response was humble. Well, let's let the Lord decide. God, actually, what happened was that Joshua and Caleb, they said, for example, verse 8, if the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us, us a land which flows with milk and honey. Only rebel not you against the, the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, how long will this people provoke me? How long will, I, will it be ere they believe me for all the signs which I have showed among them? I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them, will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. And Moses pleaded with the Lord, Lord, if you do that, the Egyptians will hear it, and they'll rub your name in the mud. Tell it to everybody around them. Now if you, verse 15, if thou shalt kill all those people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak it, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring his people into the land which he sware unto them, therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. Now I beseech you. He pled with God on the people's behalf in humility and gentleness. Let the power of my Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgressions. Verse 19, Pardon, I beseech you, the iniquity of this people. This is Moses. Humble. And then, of course, there was Korah. Korah, who, just like Mary and Aaron, decided that who did Moses think he was, etc. And Moses responded on his humility, well, we'll let God decide. And then the plague came along. Remember the plague and the one that God said, well, Put a serpent on a post and put it up and everybody who looks at it will be remembered. Once again, Moses interceded on behalf of the people. As a matter of fact, there was a time, you might recall it, where Moses said to God, 
God, take my name out of the book of life, but save the people. Well, that's a humble and gentle man. How do we respond when we're offended? Or we think we're offended? Or hurt? Do we lash out in anger and say something hurtful back? Or is the fruit of gentleness and meekness evident? Now let me ask you this question. Would any one of us say, well, see, Moses was a wimp. Would we say that? I don't think so. Because you see, gentleness and meekness do not translate into wimpiness. Actually, wimp isn't even a word. I don't think it's even in the dictionary. I suspect that it came from two words. <clears throat> Whim and whimper. And it describes someone who stands for nothing, who changes their mind and loyalty on a whim, one who lacks backbone and thus is given to whining and whimpering. Under pressure. Does that sound like Moses? I, uh, it's interesting. I was always the smallest, the, the, the little guy. In every class that I was ever in, all through school, I took abuse, both from girls and from guys, all that. And I was wimp. When I was that little, I can remember coming home from school in tears more often than I would have liked to. And I know that my dad would have loved to have gone down to school and smacked a few heads. But he knew very well he couldn't. But he prayed for me. My mother prayed for me. That God would teach me that all my security, all that I am, is in him. Amen. And I didn't have to worry about it. But when I was, I had the privilege of singing with a gospel quartet for 10 years. Awesome time. And I had a, the lead singer in our quartet, a good friend of mine. And he was a guy that was like a mentor to me. And he showed me, he taught me by his example that a Christian can be loving and gentle and kind and does not have to be a wimp. He didn't back down from anyone, but he showed them love and gentleness. By the way, now we've been talking a lot, as I said, about men. But what about women like Sarah and Rahab and Ruth? Mary, would you call any one of them a wimp? I don't think so. Not at all. Wimpiness has nothing to do with being gentle or meek and humble. And it's certainly not what God looks like, looks for in his people. Now it's not possible to conclude a study like this without looking at the greatest example that we have, the greatest example of all, our Lord Jesus Christ himself. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11, I know you know this scripture well, beginning at verse 28, he says, come unto me, all of you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus said he was meek and lowly. 
Was he a wimp? Uh, no way. In our Savior, we see his gentleness and meekness evidenced in his great compassion. Over and over in the Gospels, he had compassion. It tells us he had compassion on the crowds, on the sick and the dying. Because, as he said, they are like sheep without a shepherd. You remember Jesus sitting on the mount, on the Mount of Olives, ready to come down into Jerusalem and what we call the triumphant entry. Overlooking Jerusalem, weeping. Weeping with compassion for them. For the city, for the people. How compassionate he was. How compassionate, how humble, meek, and gently he was with his disciples who time after time, just like us, tested his patience. He was gentle and he was humble when he was arrested. And when they came, the crowds came to him in the garden, and he said, who are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Okay, well, you found him. Now let the rest of these go. Peter pulled a sword, remember? Peter pulled a sword. He was ready to fight. Jesus said, Peter, put the sword away. He healed the ear of the, the guy that Peter used the sword, remember, cut off his ear, Malchus. In humility, Christ healed him. He went to the cross, the scripture tells us, as a lamb led to the slaughter. So how do we stack up against his example? Numerous times the scripture exhorts us to gentleness and meekness, and I want to leave you with the challenge of these verses. In 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, Verses 24 and 25 say this. And the servant of the Lord, we're all servants of the Lord, must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God for adventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, James, in his letter, in chapter 3, verse 17, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, and then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And in the fruit of righteousness, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4, But let it be the hidden man, or woman, of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. And Titus, Titus chapter 3.
people are much better at us than you are. God is looking for gentle people, kind, loving. The fruit of the Spirit. Gentleness. Let's pray. Lord, thank you again for your message to us. Thank you for showing us that in a society where macho is looked for, the rough and the tough, Every day we are bombarded by videos of violence. In this kind of a world, the Holy Spirit is looking for kind and gentle, humble people. Men and women who will show the world the love and the compassion of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for I am meek and lowly of heart. That invitation stands today for those that don't know you. To open their hearts and their lives to you. To receive of your Holy Spirit. And to exhibit love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, faith self-control that only you can give. Thank you again for your message to us today. And as the scripture tells us to do so often, help us to examine ourselves and see what our lives are exhibiting. To pray each and every day for your spirit to fill us with gentleness and humility and love for all those around us. We ask us this all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. If we're struggling today, may God change our hearts. May that be the prayer of our heart. They change my heart, O oh God, and make it ever new.
Peace be to you all. And love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ. Sincerity. God bless.